Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The Master's Voice Prophecy blog has a website where I always urge and advise everyone to go and read the written prophecies that are there. The blog address is www the-masters-voice.com and you can navigate there and you can find almost all of these prophecies that have been made into video actually have a written prophecy that always has a title and a date and the Lord is the one who has given the title for every message and every message has been dated so that the date that you see appearing next to the prophecy is the date that I received it not the date that I finally got around to putting it up so the blog started in May, 2019, but these messages date back all the way from 2012. You can also go to Rumble and BitChute and Brighteon. Just look in the description box below and you will see the addresses for the Master's Voice blog or the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. They have different titles on those um, places and on BitChute and Brighteon is where you can find what I call the medical playlist about 25 videos or more concerning what I call the harm in the arm, the, the poke that all men were told was necessary for life and limb in 2020. The Lord was not outside of that phenomenon. As that thing was happening, the father had strong warnings, strong admonition, prophetic messages to all people in all nations concerning what went on. That was the advent of a new kingdom, a kingdom that is one day going to replace all known types of governance, all known types of social life and society and finances and everything. There is going to come a new order and at the head of that order sits the devil, Satan. It doesn't matter if you believe in the devil or not. The devil is going to make himself as we progress through time. So obvious that you will have to be extremely committed to fantasy and deception to say that you cannot see open evil at work in the midst of human society in the years ahead. And so the Lord brought it to my mind that I had not completed one final prophecy in a group of prophecies that I was handling concerning flooding. They, I think I was doing this in April. Yes, in April 2023, I was going through the various flood prophecies, prophecies dealing with flooding that would come to the whole world, kicked it off with dealing with extreme flooding, what the Lord called drownings that he would bring to the states of Florida and Texas for their rebellious attitude towards the Lord Jesus Christ, for taking unto themselves separatism from the union of the United States as a whole, for dealing with themselves as almost separate nations, and also for the fact that there is rampant political idolatry taking place in those states. So I brought that prophecy, I think it was April 1st, and then 10 days later, the Lord showed forth his might by bringing more than 25 inches of rain to Florida in a single 24 hour period. And this was certainly something that if people are wise, they will know that it is the Holy Spirit speaking here because there is no way that one person will be able to move through earthly prophecies, supernatural prophecies, things dealing with the past and things dealing with the future that is yet to come unless it is the voice of the Holy Spirit revealing God's secrets to us. So today's prophecy is the last one that was in a set in a series. I think I dealt with prophecies that will take place in the Middle East. That prophecy is called um, Floods, a word to the stars. And the Lord was looking at Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, um, Pakistan, that they will experience extreme flooding because they are attempting to throttle and choke the word of God in those nations, strongly Muslim nations that do not want the proliferation of gospel teaching there. And God says that he will flood those nations and part of their flooding will happen in the time period where they begin to put Christians to death. So when they begin to put people who adhere to the gospel message, who confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who order themselves according to the teachings of both the Old and the New Testament and receive Christ Jesus as their eternal salvation, 
that light of hope burning in the heart of these people who are Christians, they will begin to be extremely persecuted in those Muslim nations. And this will not only happen in the Middle East, that kind of persecution is going to ramp up even in Africa, in places like Nigeria, where Christians and Muslims now share space. They share space in the same borders in the prophecy for Nigeria. This was in March, 2022. The Lord was saying that those extremist groups that have done things such as kidnapping people and holding them for ransom and killing and beheading and setting off bombs and committing terror attacks that set Nigeria so much on edge and the government, it basically does nothing because God says that the operation of these separatist and terror groups in Nigeria is far beyond the control of the government to do anything. So it's going to increase because the war is not earthly. The war is spiritual. Satan would like to shut the mouths that talk about Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the mouth of God's people. But when God's people close their mouth because of intimidation, when they close their mouth because they want to go along to get along, when they close their mouths because they are cowards, a lot of Christians are cowards. They think things in their hearts, but they are not able to bring the words up through the esophagus into the mouth, teeth, and tongue, and confess the things that are true. There is so much power in the mouth, and that is because the Lord has set a sword in the mouths of his people, a sword that will cut between light and dark, will cut between good and evil, will cut between what is true and what is false. But as long as you keep your mouth shut, there can be no edification, there can be no challenge, there can be no revelation of the truth of God's word. And so the devil is on a rampage to shut up the mouths of believers and many believers do not have the metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. They do not have the courage the guts, the strength to confess their Lord, to confess the truth in their families, to confess the truth where they are about what the Bible says, what God calls holy, righteous, and good. And so the enemy is rapidly advancing and taking the territory. There's a video on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog that is called The Devil is Outworking the Saints, where God said plainly that Satan works way harder to advance and promote his kingdom than Christians work to advance and promote the kingdom of light and truth, which is of our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is an eternal battle. And God says that as his people are persecuted and as persecution rises in the whole earth, against those who confess Christ, he is going to send the punishment of floods against those countries that will persecute his people and in the future times, martyr them. Christians will be put to death for their faith. And so this prophecy is one in a series. It is talking about West Africa and the title is simply Flood West Africa Part 3. And I received this prophecy on June the 24th, 2019. And the banner scripture is this, the floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice, the floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. And this is Psalm 93 verses three to four. And so this, if you can rightly perceive it, is a lament. This writer is crying up, crying out to the Lord and telling him how floods have lifted up. Lord, be mindful. We cry out to you because the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Now this can be applied scripturally two ways. Obviously, when you listen to it about the voice of the floods and the fact that the floods are lifting up waves, that the noise of many waters and the mighty waves of the sea, it is talking about the unruly, unchecked, and in the last days, fatal and extremely difficult action of water in the earth. Many prophecies have come come on this channel about the damage that floods will cause. The fact that the Lord says that here in America, flooding is going to increase. And one of the things that he mentioned many years ago is that when the floods do damage, 
the insurance companies will refuse to pay out. That's right, you're paying your premiums now and you feel that you are safe because you actually think that the insurance companies are going to honor their part of the deal. But what has been prophesied here is that because of the widespread damage that future floods will cause in America, the insurance companies are going to, as a whole, renege and very few of them are actually going to pay out premiums that will allow people to start over, that will allow people to recover damage for personal property, heirlooms, sentimental value stuff that is lost, as well as practical stuff like fridges, stoves, microwaves, and other things that are going to be totally destroyed. And so you can look at Psalm 93 verses three and four and say that this is a lament, somebody crying out to God about the fact that the floods are causing damage, but there is coming to this earth another type of flood. And these are floods of unrighteousness that is always discussed on this channel. These are floods of sin. These are floods of sexual immorality. These are floods of violence murder and hard heartedness. These are floods of pride that are going to lift up their voice. And if possible, drown out the message of holiness, righteousness, repentance, and trust in God. These floods are going to arise from another type of sea that will come like mighty waves, which is humanity in the earth. Many times in the scripture, when you talk about large groups of people, which nations are, regions are, and entire continents are, it's focusing on people and how the ebb and flow of our thoughts and our emotions and our speech and the way we interact with each other is like the rolling and the ebb and the flow of the sea. And what Psalm 93 is also saying is that the time will come when the righteous of God will lift up their voice and say that the floods of unrighteousness, the floods of sin, the floods of rape, the floods of drug epidemics, the floods of men turning to loving one another in homosexuality, the floods of women crossing their gender and saying that they are men and men crossing their gender and saying that they are women. The floods of immorality are going to flood this earth and it is time for the righteous in Christ to put on the holy armor of God, the helmet, breastplate, belt, shoes, the shield and the sword, and to gird ourselves about with serious prayer, which can only be effective when we are living a holy life of confession and openness to the Holy Spirit. It is time to gird up in prayer because these floods are going to increase, but there is a ray of hope in the scripture. It says the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. So whether you are in a nation where the flooding, physical flooding, water flooding is being spoken, you're starting to see typhoons and water hurricanes and tsunamis, you can call out to God and remind him that he said in Psalm 93 that when the floods lift up their voice, his voice is greater than the noise of the waters and that he should remember your country. He should remember your family. He should remember your region in prayer. And it is good to invest in these prayers before these things happen. These things are prophesied in uh, the end time scripture, which I'm going to read for you just now. And so they're absolutely going to happen. So this is not encouraging you to say, oh, it's not going to happen if we pray. It's definitely going to come because these are final judgments upon the lands, the peoples, the nations for sin. However, nothing precludes us from calling on God for help and mercy. Lord, please don't let my home be washed away. Lord, please don't let my parents' home, please don't let my town be washed away. Lord, please mitigate the damage. Please protect us. Send your angels. Raise up a shield for us, O oh God, and help us as the floods raise up their voice. The similar application goes for the rise of wickedness in the earth, the rise of attacks, the rise of rape. Remember that as unrighteousness, immorality, sin, and wickedness increases in man, this is because Satan is strongly pressing his spiritual pressure against humanity. 
And the problem with humanity is that humanity is naked before the kinds of spirits that are coming. People put so much trust in the fact that they watch one or two deliverance videos or their pastor is a strong man of God. And so they think they're going to be all right. When the devil unleashes high end principalities, princes, powers, virtues, thrones, these are the names of angels and the levels that they occupy. When the devil unleashes these things and you are a weak Christian or you are a person who's unused to prevailing prayer, you are a person who's not used to doing warfare, you are a person who doesn't even know what spiritual warfare is. When these things start coming into the earth, you will be overwhelmed. You may end up like the seven sons of Sceva who thought that the name of Jesus Christ was just a magic wand. You just say Jesus. I see that all the time on the internet. Oh, when the aliens come, just use the name of Jesus. Please understand that I've spoken many times on this channel, that power will meet power. And only if the power of God is mighty in you, strong in you, you have made the investment during the good years in prayer, fasting, learning the word, meditating on the word of God, but also showing by the life you lead your love for God. Love for God is not a mouth situation. It is a life situation. God will know if you love him by how you live your day to day. You're watching compromising material and then you say you love God. You're a liar. You are practicing deception. You may fool yourself. You may believe that you are a child of God, but I promise you that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. When the Lord bites you, he will know if you're the true tried and tested gold or if you're just a false pewter or lead penny. You can't fool God. And so the proof of the prevailing power of God in you will come from the choices you make, where you sow your time, where you tithe your time, where you spend your time. God knows his children and he knows the tares that are in the house of God. And he knows the total unbeliever who, if they hear the word of power coming, they can easily repent and come into the kingdom. While many who are in the kingdom now assured and thinking that once saved, always saved, they are going to exit the kingdom once the pressures, once the floods come in. So then how will you go? Are these floods, physical water floods and floods of immorality, floods of warfare going to sweep you away or are you going to make the cuts? These are questions that we all have to ask ourselves. And so with the floods coming, the Lord is looking at the continent of Africa and most of this judgment centers around heartbrokenness and sorrows coming to the nations because of sins that are being committed. When power meets power, the higher power will either prevail, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Jesus Christ who puts an end to all contention with the spiritual realm, or the devil is going to prevail. The word says that Jesus Christ is Lord, but the problem is that in the testing of things, the devil knows whether Jesus Christ is really Lord in everyone's life or not. The test, the Lord says 2023 is the year of the test. These tests have already started since last year, actually, and they're going to come to everyone. And if you fail your test, it has already been prophesied here that God will send you back to the starting line. You will go back. You will lose that high position that you were given, whether it's a high position in the spirit, whether it's a high position in the job, whether it's perhaps a high position leading in your family for the first time. And you will simply be relegated back to the starting line for some people, or you will be demoted, moved back a few steps because you could not maintain righteousness under fire. <sighs> Floods, West Africa, and this is June 24, 2019. Floods are coming to the cities of the world. Floods are coming to the nations. Here is the beginning of sorrows, heartbrokenness of the nations. And that should be easy to understand because flooding causes loss of property. It causes extensive property damage. 
Floods can damage entire communities, entire towns or cities. Floods can affect a lot of expensive infrastructure, such as trains, such as roads, such as airports, such as, I think, electromagnetic equipment. If there are power plants or things like that, TV stations, radio stations, they can all be affected by flooding. And also the heartbrokenness of the nation's part simply comes in when there is loss of life. In fact, when people's homes are damaged and they suffer a lot of property damage, it's heartbroken. They're, they get heartbroken. We've all seen people weeping on TV as people were seriously crying a few years ago when Europe came under judging for flooding, just as the Lord had said that Europe was going back to its pagan ways and he was going to flood them out. He said that he will wash away iniquity and sin from before his face. And so Europe was going through, I think it was France, it was Germany and a few other places were experiencing terrible floods. And now in this year, Italy is experiencing devastating, never before seen flooding. All of this is God's judgment coming to the cities of the world. And this word was received as far back as 2019. So there will be beginning of sorrows. There will be heartbrokenness. And if we go to Luke chapter 21 and simply look at verses 25 and 26, it says, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And so here's God talking about beginning of sorrows, heartbroken nations, meaning different communities, heartbroken. And in the Bible, it says that the nations will be distressed and they will be perplexed. Perplexity is when you do not have an answer for what is happening. If anyone remembers the very clear word that God gave in the, the floods, it's called the floods are coming. This is about Texas and Florida. God said that um, FEMA will not be able to cope and pro provide good care for what will be coming to those two states. And he said that basically America is going to experience flooding all across the nation and that FEMA will be unable to cope with the extent of the damage and with the extent of the needs that we will have here in America. And God also said that because he is rejecting America as a favorite, rejecting her from before his face, that means that the kind of floods will be the kinds of floods that perplex us. It will not just be a little rain like they have in California, a little rain here and there. It will be the kind of floods unfortunately, that take hundreds or thousands of people to their death. And the Lord said, we will experience the kind of natural disasters that they usually see in India, they usually see in Thailand, they usually see in the Philippines. And in those tsunamis and things like that, thousands and thousands and thousands of people lose their lives. This is a time for all nations, all continents to be sober minded. So here are the nations mentioned. There will be flooding in Nepal from excessive rain and mountain flow. Mountain flow is either where the temperatures warm up extremely, they warm up much faster and for much longer than expected at a certain time of year. And then that ice cap that's on the mountains will suddenly melt and you will get flash floods coming down the mountains or you will get sudden uh, slides of snow or things like that. Mountain flow is also caused when there are sudden shifts of the earth. This is usually tremor, tremors or outright earthquakes that causes all the, all the snow that is sitting high on these mountains in Nepal to shift suddenly. And then there will be sudden snow, snow slides down the mountain or landslides down the mountain that will cause flooding. There will be flooding in the Gulf of Guinea. Flooding in Mauritania and flooding in the West African basin area around that entire area. So in Mauritania, in the West African basin where Mauritania sits, and he says this refers to all other countries in that low lying area next to Mauritania. Just a moment, please. The countries in that region, they're called basin countries, are as follows. Liberia. Ivory Coast, Ghana, 
Togo, Benin, Nigeria, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Sao Tome and Principe, Republic of Congo, Angola. So these countries are listed as basin countries and actually quite a few of them appear in this prophetic word by name. And so the Lord shows that these other countries will be affected by the same kind of flooding that is going to come to Mauritania and the Gulf of Guinea. And the picture that I saw when the Lord was talking to me is I saw a flat salt pan. So a salt pan is these kinds of areas that don't have very good drainage and the ground is usually very hard, packed and dry. It is a place where the water will collect. And if there is too much water, it sits there and becomes stagnant until the sun is hot enough to dry it. However, in times of overflowing rains, the water tends to rise in that area, just like a plate that collects rain. And that situation God was making me see can be very dangerous to people and livestock because it can cause flash flooding. Flash flooding is where water comes in from too much rain or from an unexpected source and it moves with rushing power along the ground because it cannot be absorbed from the ground and it also has no place to run off and thereby it creates floods. So another place that the Lord said will have flooding is the Gulf of Mexico. And another place that will have flooding is Trinidad and Tobago. Now, when the Lord said Trinidad and Tobago to me, I saw the Trinidadian flag flying high. It was flying high in the spirit by itself. But then water began to fill up around this flag as if the flag was in a cup. I couldn't see a cup, but just imagine there was a clear, something like a beaker and you see the flag flying. But then water began to pile up around the flag like a cup that was being filled. And then the water passed the point of the flag and it started to look as if the flag was drowning. And the Lord said that the people in Trinidad and Tobago will be punished for severe witchcraft as well as other sins that they commit. But the Lord did not detail to me what the other sins were. He only said that they will be punished by floods for severe witchcraft. And severe witchcraft is something that I spoke about in another prophecy that is called Africa, you are in trouble. And in that prophecy, God mentioned that the Caribbean nations are very deep in voodoo and witchcraft and hexes and other things that grieve and vex the Holy Spirit. Please understand when you are using witchcraft, when you're using divination, when you're going to psychics, when you're burning sage, when you're reading horoscopes, when you're doing things that you think are um, harmless in your heart, you know that they're not harmless. And the reason that many people do these things is because many people have a lust for knowledge and a lust for power. Witchcraft, divination, psychics, um, Ouija boards, uh, other types of things like inquiring, tarot, tea leaves, all these things, uh, horoscopes, astrology, people do these things because people want to know what is ahead for them. They want to know their future. They want to know their destiny, but they do not want to go to the pure source, which is God himself and humble themselves and say, Lord, I'm looking for a direction for my life. I'm trying to hear from you. I want to know what is good for me. Please speak to me. Speak to me from your word. Activate the gift of dreams in me so that I can have dreams about my life. People don't want to do the things that please God because to people's mindset, it takes too long. So they're not interested in doing that. So they seek alternate sources of power. They inquire at altars in India. They go and they inquire at oracles and things like that. They seek false prophets. They're willing to pay false prophets to prophesy to them. Can you give me a personal prophecy? They don't want to pray. They don't want to wait upon the Lord as the Psalms say, wait, wait, I say upon the Lord. They want to know now. And so they try to see if their love star is aligned by reading love horoscopes or job horoscopes. All those things are cursed activities. You have problems in your life. And so you think that if you burn sage and other things like that, it will clear your energy. Why do you think these things are forbidden by God? 
These are occult practices that bring curses into your life and they increase the demonic activity. And there's some that are even more malignant than that, killing people, practicing voodooism, hexes, curses, delving deep into the spiritual mud. All this stuff is promoted by false spirits, demons, devil, Satan himself. You will get yourself caught and snared in a trap. Those who want to use crystals and Kabbalah and things like that, you will come up against beings that will connect to your life. And it's going to be the fights of your life to get rid of these things. If you think that they will leave you because you cry or because you say, oh, I used to do this and now my dreams are horrible and they're attacking me. They will not leave without a fight. If you open the door to Satan, you better be ready for the worst roommate of your life. You will need Jesus Christ to have mercy on you. You will need to do the work of prayer and fasting and serious repentance to let go of some of the things that people have opened the door to. And some people after hearing all this will still not repent. They will say that they want to go back to the things their ancestors were doing, wherever your ancestors went, practicing witchcraft, divination, and occultism. There is plenty of room there to receive your soul. Also, if you persist in wickedness and things that offend God. And so, Gulf of Mexico and Trinidad and Tobago will have flooding and Trinidad and other Caribbean nations is definitely because of witchcraft. And then the Lord changed his focus. And I saw flooding in the West African nations of Togo and Ghana. And the Lord was pointing a finger at these nations. And he said sternly witchcraft. And I saw another West African nation, but the Lord said that the judgment of this nation will tarry. And for the time being, there will be no floods sent against this nation. However, if this country does not repent, does not stop practicing the same types of sin listed here, occultism, witchcraft, and other pagan practices that open the door to evil spirits, he says the flood judgment will also come to this West African nation. And that nation is called Liberia. Here's the word of the Lord as spoken after he was done illuminating these things. West Africa, hear the voice of the Lord. Repent of your sins this day because you carry my treasure. You carry a select and personal treasure. Therefore, turn from your sins at the sound of my voice and repent or the hand of the Lord will come against you strongly. This is what God said. You know you cannot swim. You only fish in those waters. So repent if you have heard this message and my voice. I heard the Lord say again, West Africa, repent, or I will come against you in a breaking wall of water out of the Atlantic Ocean, and I will wash you clean as trimmed fish. I will scatter you abroad as I did before with my waves. Do not sin against me any more. Repent. And so this breaking wall of water will definitely be more than just a flash flood or more than just the sea being occasionally stirred up. God is going to greatly use sea inundation, which is where the land is completely attacked and overcome by the waves of the sea, and he's also going to use tsunamis. So just a moment as I read to you here words that the Lord gave me just before I started this prophecy. One of the things that he said was encroachment of the sea upon the land. So this will be one type of judgment. Encroachment means to gradually creep up on and take something. So this would be a good picture is if there's land, but there's no clear property marker between person A and person B, then one way of encroachment might be is if person B knows that there's a pretty clear line that should divide one from the other, but he goes to that clear line and then he starts planting corn there. And then when his corn has grown a little bit, then he starts planting beans a little bit on the other person's side. And the other person doesn't say anything. And then he starts to plant a, a few flowers or something else. And so gradually, person B is taking more of the territory from person A. 
and they're not saying anything, or maybe for some reason they won't be able to do anything about it. That's what God is saying. The sea is going to start claiming the land in many countries. So many countries, you're going to start to watch your borders and coastland disappear as the ocean and the lakes and whatever else begin to erode away the edges and also begin to come inland more and more and sometimes flood out coastal areas, making it impossible for people to live there. And they have to relocate a little bit in, and then the water will come and take that place where they were, and then will creep up, and then they have to relocate somewhere else. That is what encroachment means. It means that the shorelines of many nations will be lost to the sea. The second thing that the Lord says is inundation by water. Inundation basically means to be leapt upon and completely overwhelmed. So the water will basically leap upon the land, leap upon property, leap upon people, and completely wash them out, take them by surprise, flood them out. So one of the ways that the Lord says this will happen is by flash flood. I already spoke about this. This is where water suddenly comes. It doesn't only have to come by rainfall that suddenly comes too much in a day until the floods are raging through the areas. A flash flood can be caused by a sudden melting um, of snow somewhere, or it can be caused by an earthquake that will suddenly shift the land and maybe water that was in a lake somewhere else will suddenly be diverted somewhere else and there can be damage like that. It can also be this inundation, this sudden jumping of the water on people can be caused by excessive rainfall that can lead to flooding. It can also be caused by sudden water events. This is one of those water hurricanes or this can be one of those things that I described seeing uh, for the first time in 2019. It's a very strange thing. The sea was here, and then suddenly the seawater began to funnel. But instead of making a funnel that went down like a sinkhole in the sea, this thing rose up, and then it began to go to the land. So if the land is here, it began to move wild like this, pressing up against the land. And then when it got to the land, because the sea couldn't go any further, this tunnel simply went whoosh on the land and it caused a lot of destruction. It ruined a lot of stuff that was at the seashore and it also causes loss of life. So that is one of them. That is a sudden water event. A sudden water event can also be um, a typhoon. It can be a hurricane. Those things have taken huge tolls on countries when they've happened or a tsunami. And the last one is inundation of the land. Inundation by water can occur when a dam or a catchment area breaks. So if there is a large dam in a country and that dam suddenly breaks, or if there is some other kind of natural catchment that usually holds a lot of water. If it suddenly floods, that water can become deadly and inundate the land. Also, there can be overflow when there is too much rain into a dam or into a catchment area such that it cannot hold the pressure. That could cause a flood or that could cause this thing to break. And so these are ways that the Lord was speaking of to just open up more about how floods can cause problems. So I continue with the Lord's words to Africa and West Africa. He says, lay down your idols, lay down your fetishes and lay down your Guinea gods and cleanse your hands before me and I will receive you. Togo and Ghana, you are judged. The hand of the Lord will strike you and floods will ruin, will run into your cities. This is the Lord's word to the nations of West Africa, to all of them, repent. And so I heard the Lord say, West Africa is coming under judgment very soon for the sins of their ancestors, which they continue to perpetrate. So if you live in these places, please feel free. I know that some of them might be ancestral worship, which is even beginning to 
become extremely, extremely widely practiced here in the United States, especially in the black community. People are saying that, well, you know, we're going back to our ancestral practices and our ancestors did this. And, you know, they, they, they were people who were in touch with their roots. And so you find, uh, very famous stars here starting to talk about how they burn sage for peace of mind and how they, um, they are following different gods and everything. Nigerian gods have become very popular here in the United States because of the sin of the superstar who is known as Beyonce Knowles. As this woman is putting forward this idea that blackness is intrinsically linked to ancestral worship and stepping outside of the safety of Jesus Christ to bow down to what is nothing more than fallen beings and idols as she makes it trendy and popular. This is part of the reason that the Lord has judged this woman and said that her life on earth is a snare to millions of people. When famous people popularize sin, millions of people think that that sin is okay because look at the famous person doing it. Well, God is greater than all famous people. And that is why God says that a person putting crowns on their set, their head and following some of these Nigerian things Nigerian deities called uh, Oshun or Osun and some of them like that, the Lord is saying this is unacceptable to raise up the worship of idols from other countries in a country that he has raised up to be a beacon and an icon, a princess, a queen in his eyes, but she's defiling herself because her so-called influencers and leaders are leading thousands and millions of people into backwardness. And there are many faithful people that come here from African countries who love the word of the Lord and who condemn these types of practices. So how or ironic is it that people are running away from this so-called ancestral practice and then here in the Americas, people are going backwards to sin while other people have abandoned the sin and come forward into one ship with Jesus Christ. This is just confusion and deception taking place. And so whatever these sins of the ancestors are, worshiping of other gods, lifting up of creatures, bowing down to the creatures, sacrificing sheep and goat in a mockery of how things were done in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ now has shed his precious blood. The need for sacrifices of any kind to any deity is absolutely unnecessary. We have an intercessor. We have an advocate with the Father. An advocate is someone who will stand up for you, who will argue for you, who will fight your case in the heavenly places. That is who Jesus Christ is, the eternal advocate with God. So no one needs to talk to any ancestors or perform any special rites to get God's attention. And this encapsulates the deception of the Catholics who think that God will only hear them once they add Madre, whatever her name is, Mary's name to the prayers. This is idolatry, immorality against God. It is sin to think that Jesus Christ needs a side helper intercessor. He does not of any kind. God says to Africa, especially West Africa, just a moment, please. Who gave you these abundant lands? Who gave you these abundant lands where even the foreigner and the stranger have come to you seeking, a, seeking wealth and riches to carry away to their lands? Now, this is speaking of ancient times where colonizers went to the African continent and took away wealth and riches, many different types of spices and gold and all the resources that they found there, including people to bring to their lands to enrich themselves. The Lord says, who made you abundant? Please excuse uh, the darkness. I'm trying to finish this before it gets too dark. Who made you abundant and who made you fruitful? that you would now reject me in favor of wicked trinkets that you bury in your homes and bury under the trees of your yards. So now when you're practicing fetishism, when you're practicing occultism, when you're practicing witchcraft, Satan always needs a token. Just as the Lord has given us who believe in him, the bread of his flesh 
and the blood of his sacrifice, not actual bread and not actual flesh, that we celebrate communion, which brings oneness with Jesus Christ, Satan always needs a little token. He needs you to sacrifice a chicken. He needs you to bring, uh, if you want to curse someone's fertility, then you need to bring the person's underwear or a lock of hair. You need to bring some kind of token to the altar of darkness for them to use to lock onto the target. And God is saying, with all I've given you, I made you so rich that people came in the past and robbed you and you still are not empty, even though they did their best to empty you. Why would you reject me who gives so much abundance? To start putting your faith in little tokens and sacrificing animals and sacrificing human beings? Human sacrifice is practiced in Africa just as it is practiced here in the United States, in Latin America, in Southeast Asia, they do a lot of sacrificing over there as well. He says, why would you be burying trinkets in your homes and in the trees of your yards? Why would you need beads? Why would you need a special this or a special that to keep it in your house? Because the witch doctor told you, you must keep this and you must keep that. And that's how the money is going to come to you and never disclose the secret of your riches and things like that. God is asking, why would you trade? A living well, Jesus Christ, for empty cisterns, broken cisterns, a broken, cracked well that is always leaking water and can never give you enough. Satan will always give more, take more than he ever gives you. You will experience false miracles in the beginning and then later the cost for what he's giving you will become higher and higher and higher until it always ends in tears and it will usually end with death, someone's death. And most people who go and put their hands in witchcraft always know and will confess if you ask them. Their testimonies are all over the internet that eventually all the sacrifices they made, all the people that they sacrificed, all the cattle that they sacrificed, all the blood they drank, they drink human blood and eat human flesh in witchcraft. And the witches know it. All of that is not enough. In the end, the irony of the devil is that whatever you do, he will try to circle it back on you. He will eventually begin to chase you for your life. And that is when the demons you begin to send here and send there, stop obeying you. And they begin to torment you, chase you. That's usually when you will find witches coming to the church and confessing everything and begging the pastor to pray for them. So God says, why do you want so little when he is so much? He said, who made you and who gave you life that you would now depart from me and start doing your wickedness that burns my eyesight all day long. Always remember, no matter what you're doing, the eyes of God is on you. You can go all over the internet and perpetrate that you are the biggest pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher, whatever. You can go around quoting all the scripture. God knows what is under the belly and it will come out in the last days. This is for pastors. This is for churches. This is for presidents. This is for everybody. I will approach you with water and fire, says the Lord. Ghana, you are a nation of stubborn witches. I remember your wounds. God is saying to the nation of Ghana, singling them out here and saying that the things they practice has wounded him. And he says, I will approach you once more with water and fire. So perhaps Ghana has already experienced these types of judgments, water judgments and judgments of perhaps fire that has broken out somewhere because he says, I will approach you once more. Once more means that the Lord has already done it before. And then he closed off with saying, Togo, repent or the floods will cover, ca carry you away. This is the word of the Lord. So this word, I've spoken it before in another prophecy, this thing called Guinea gods. When I looked it up, I found that there is a word called Ogini, and it means what or what is this? So when you are using this phrase where God is saying, put away your Guinea gods, this is God basically questioning and saying, what is this that you are bowing down to and worshiping? And why on earth, Africa, would you be bowing down and worshiping things that are questionable, things that are not equal to the free and loving salvation that Jesus Christ has provided for you? And so this prophecy is from 2019 June, which 
up to now makes it four years old. It is a four year old message that I'm only now getting to make into video. So perhaps if you have knowledge of whether these things have started in these nations, have already come to pass in these nations, please do share that information in the comments below. Thank you for being with me. I am Celestial and this is The Master's Voice. I'm going to start posting content on TikTok and on Instagram as time allows, but I would just like to leave this caveat. I said um, that I already know that, well, I've seen or I found out that there are quite a few people who use Master's Voice clips and they post it on TikTok and things like that. And my only viewpoint is that if you are not scattering, meaning that if you are not trying to destroy credibility in the Lord's words, if you're not trying to tear down the channel or use your personal feelings or whatever, then obviously you are a gatherer. You are trying to get the word out. You are sharing it in that community because for years I have not been anywhere near the TikTok or the Instagram space, but now God has widened my horizons and said that he wants me to go there. And so I'm asking those who Use clips from the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Please always label them properly. Please give the proper credit. Please, um, I think it's called at. Please at me in the videos. And please always give the proper credit for the sound to Master's Voice Prophecy blog. So I've I posted new videos there today for the first time. Um, and you can find me on TikTok on master's voice prophecy blog. I will leave the TikTok and the YouTube information under this video and then try to go back and update them. So please give the proper sound credits, original sound to my channel and, um, God bless you. Please make sure that you look into these messages for yourself by going to the master's voice prophecy blog. And until I see you again, uh, take care of yourselves and goodbye.